So I'm going to talk a little bit about the dual XGPS 160 Bluetooth antenna. This antenna seems to be something that everybody race day has a problem with. Um, they either don't have it set up correctly or they haven't updated the firmware in it um, or they're not truly synced to it or they have a misunderstanding of what the, the uh, device actually is meant to do. This unit is nothing more than a Bluetooth GPS positioning antenna. No different than the white Lowrance antennas that you would put on the front of your race cars. It has nothing to do with data. It's not to be confused with something that's going to surf the internet or load background map imagery into lead nav. That is still stuff you have to prep utilizing other lead nav features. If you have a Wi-Fi only iPad, you will absolutely need to use one of these pucks. If you have a cell model iPad, that's great for just casual off-roading. It has nothing to do with cell data, cell service. It just happens that the cell model iPads have a built-in GPS positioning chip. Therefore, they'll triangulate your position. The XGPS 160 is actually rated for up to 1,100 miles per hour. It's built for aircraft. Um, it's not something you need every day. So that's why we recommend going out and spending the extra $100 for a cell model iPad. You do not need the cell plan but having that built-in GPS chip will allow you to use your iPad by itself. In a race car, we absolutely recommend you run this antenna. In your chase truck, not a big deal. Just get a cell model iPad, spend the extra $100 for that, and you'll be good to go and you won't need to worry about this puck. So the puck comes slick. It comes with a little rubber boot to slap on the dash of your aircraft or, or uh, personal vehicle. Something that we build is the X6 enclosure and the X6C mounting plate, the cage adapter. What our cage adapter does in our case, it protects the unit first of all. It locks in the power cable. This is a power cable. Again, this is a Bluetooth device. This is the power. I would say, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, folks are running powered in. They do have an internal battery on the XGPS 160. They advertise it as being around 10 hours, but that's just sitting idle. When lead nav's running, you're looking at, you know, maybe four to six hours of battery life. So we absolutely recommend plugging it in. It doesn't need much power. You can plug it into any cigarette adapter, any USB adapter. It, it doesn't really need as much juice as say the iPad does. You can buy just the X6, you can Velcro it to your dash, or you, if you're in a cage vehicle, you can take advantage of the X6C and, and just clamp it on anywhere on your cage. The XGPS 160 by itself has a pretty decent waterproof rating or water resistant rating, I should say. Nothing's waterproof. I mean, it's, it's pretty water resistant. The only place you're going to get any moisture into it is, I'd say, through the power button. But the power button has a little recessed little groove in there, and it, it's pretty good. Just like anything, if you want this thing to be bomber waterproof, you're going to have to prep it. You know, there, I spent 20 years playing around the water. I can tell you, everything waterproof, you still have to take some care into prepping it before and, and maintaining it. So if you totally want to seal this thing off, what you could do is you could take some silicone and put it in the little power, uh, little port here, just to kind of seal that, that little gap up in there. And there's some little down here, you can put a couple silicone beads once you get the thing mounted into the screw holes under the X6. And if you really want to get all gung ho, you could just put a real thin bead of silicone around the power button so it still functions. Um, and this thing is darn near diveable at that point, right? All right, so here's the next GPS 160 in the box. We're gonna open it up. So we opened up our XGPS 160. I hit the power button. As you can see, we're inside right now, so it has no lock and it's flashing green. Uh, once it gets a GPS lock, it'll turn steady green. Then you have a Bluetooth sync light. Uh, you have up to five different devices you can sync to one puck. So you can sync multiple iPads or iPhones to this one unit. But right now I got both flashing. I do not have a GPS lock because we're inside and I have a flashing blue light because I have not yet synced to the puck. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take an iPhone or iPad and I want to download the Dual Sky Pro Status Tool app. It's a free app made by Dual. 
allowing you to check the firmware, update the firmware, and check the status of the puck. You can also use that to check the signal strength when you're placing it into a vehicle. So I'm going to back out and right down here you can see the dual GPS app down below. Updates for this app come out almost every time iOS updates. You know, every time your iPhone or iPad has an update, typically Duel will come out with an update and it's embedded in the latest update of their app. So the great thing about that is before you leave, all you got to do is make sure your Duel app is updated. And when you go out into the field, if you forgot to update a puck or if your buddy forgot to update his puck, you can go ahead and update his firmware from the app in the field. The number one thing that we find that we have to help people with on the start line come race day, for example, is updating the firmware of this puck. People either don't even know it needs an update or they forgot to update it and iOS just did a big update for Bluetooth and now the device is bricked, it doesn't work. So we literally come up the start line with, with an iPhone or my iPad with the current update of Dual Sky Pro Status Tool app and I run an update on their puck. And then I forget the device and resync the device and it's good to go. All right, so we're gonna open up the settings in the iPad or iPhone. We're gonna go to Bluetooth and we're gonna make sure Bluetooth is turned on. And at the top of the list, you're gonna see my devices. This is a history of devices that you've synced to in the past, they're in your memory. When you turn on Bluetooth, your iPad or iPhone is constantly looking for those devices, right? So if any of those devices are something you're not gonna be using race day, go ahead and forget them out of your, your uh, device list. And you do that by clicking on the I button next to each one and forgetting it. I'm gonna go ahead and forget this device as well. And right now we we have a brand new puck that has never been synced to before. So when you do an initial sync with a Bluetooth device, it can be kind of tricky. Um, you're trying to get that initial handshake. You're trying to find the device and it's trying to do that initial sync to it. So it's something you got to play around with a little bit it is something that you definitely don't want to be doing on race day on the start line. You want to do this away from the start line in the pits, back home, you want to be away from everybody else's Bluetooth puck. Um, we find that on, you know, when guys are trying to do this on the start line, there might be 20 pucks within range of them, which obviously causes an issue. So something that you'll see that we do, and we highly recommend it, is on the side of our uh, cases, we'll put the serial number, or at least the last three or four digits of the serial number, and we'll label it on the side of the unit, all right? This, this is a good idea because if you have multiple devices, say you have a couple in your pre-runner or your race truck, um, when you get back and you want to jump into another vehicle and sync to the puck or, or go through the process that I'm showing you right now, you're not going to try to guess which device is yours, right? And you can also forget the old units out of the list and kick off a new one. All right, so up on the list here, if you don't initially see your device in the list, just go ahead and... Turn Bluetooth off, turn Bluetooth back on, right? Just kick off that process again. Again, this is the first handshake with a new unit. It's trying to find it. I still have flashing lights on my unit and boom. All right, so now up on the list, I see 9E33. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to pay attention to the blue light. It's flashing, it starts flashing rapidly, then I get a solid blue. We are now paired to this device. In your menu, you'll see that, that serial number bump up to my devices. It's now in the memory. So now when I wanna, if I turn off Bluetooth, I'll see the blue light go back to a flashing blue. I turn on Bluetooth and it's already up in my devices. So now I just click on it. Yep, I wanna pair that out and boom, connected. It's instant. We got that initial handshake taken care of and now whenever we wanna to sync to this device, we just turn on Bluetooth. It's already up in my devices, click on it, synced, right? So the next thing we wanna do 
is back out of settings and we want to pull up our latest update to the dual sky pro status tool app i'm going to pull up their app and right away we get a pop-up asking if we want to update to the latest firmware yes um, if i cancel that out of the menu and I go up to settings. I can also find out down there on the bottom that I'm running version 3.4.8 right now. If I go to check update, right there again, it's telling me that there's a newer update out there, right? So yes, I absolutely want to update this unit. I'm going to hit okay. You're going to see a little status window. It tells you do not turn off the XGPS 160 unit and just don't touch it, let it go. But after this update is complete, it's gonna give you a pop-up. You can see right now I'm at 28%. It's gonna give you a pop-up telling you to forget the device out of the memory of your Bluetooth list, right? You gotta forget the device. Um, it's something to do with the reboot. It refreshed the puck itself. So you will have to forget the device and do a brand new initial handshake with the unit, right? And again, you want to do that prior to race day on the start line. This is stuff that you do at home. This is stuff that you, you get everything updated a week before the race and you go out and run the equipment and make sure everything's updated, everything's running solid, okay? I cannot express enough that you know, lead nav is a very sophisticated set of tools. And number one, you have to learn them. And number two, you have to practice this capability. You can't just, you cannot just show up race day, jump in a car, turn everything on, flip the switches, and why isn't this working? It, it, it's, it's not, it's not going to work like that. You have to learn it. You have to take the time it, it needs to practice and train with it. And to get all the magic out of it, you have to put the work in. You absolutely have to put the hours in. So I'm at 71%, 75%. It's wrapping up its update. All right, so we're all updated. So you get the pop-up on the screen after the update. I'm going to read it to you. Update complete. XGPS 160 will disconnect. After forgetting the device in the Bluetooth paired list in the iOS device, pair it again. You may need to reboot this app. All right. So it's letting you know right there that a lot's gone on. The puck did a firmware update reboot. Um, so again, you're going to have that, that kind of initial handshake headache. Right now, I'm going to take the puck and I'm going to attempt to power it back up. Boom. I'm back to a flashing green and a flashing blue. I'm going to hit OK on the pop-up. And we're going to close down the status tool app. I'm going to go back into settings. I'm going to forget the XGPS 160. And I'm going to wait for it to pop back up. If it doesn't pop back up, again, the initial handshakes can be a little tricky. So I'm going to try to kick it into gear by turning Bluetooth off and turning Bluetooth back on. All right, there we go. It's popped back up in the Bluetooth list. I'm going to attempt to connect to it. Connected. You can see we went from flashing blue to a steady blue. And I still have a flashing green light because I am inside. So I actually had to take my XGPS 160 outside and it took about three to five minutes. And now it's got a lock. It has a solid green. And I'm gonna show you kind of what's going on inside the XGPS 160 app to let you know that it has a, has a good position update. So you'll see inside their app, um, down here at the bottom, I got three solid bars. I got an excellent, good, and good uh, for horizontal, vertical, and 3D map uh, for positioning. And if I switch over to satellites down here, you can actually see all the different satellites the XGPS 160 is currently talking to. So something that I did to get it kicked in the gear was I went in the settings when I was outside and I did a restarting of GPS modules, a cold start down here at the bottom of the list. Um, that just kind of reset everything and, and for the area and got it to lock uh, for the first time. 
If I go down to check update now, you can see your firmware is up to date. So we're good to go. So you can see already, I mean, we're already talking to over a dozen satellites. I just set it outside, it's got a solid lock. I can toggle between uh, status and satellites. Now, I wanna close down the dual app completely. I'm gonna close down lead nav. I can go back into Bluetooth menu and I can uh, double check that I'm connected to the puck right here that we know we're connected to 9E33. So at this point, that's when I would want to label the puck. And I'm gonna close that, open up lead nav. And down here on the bottom left of the screen, you'll see a DUAL dual logo pop up, letting you know that lead nav is currently synced to the GPS puck. You'll also notice when you start driving around that your position is totally fluid versus that one second hop that you'll traditionally see if you're just running the built-in GPS chip on a cell model iPad or an iPhone. So that's it. I hope this helps. Um, again, this is the number one issue that we have been seeing lately. Um, a lot of people on the start line are just freaking out because they first don't even know that the puck needed an update in firmware and, uh, or, they, or they just forgot to and there's a big iOS push and, and things got a little messed up. Uh, so that, that's, that's how the uh, puck functions. That's how it works. That's how you should sync it. Update this device. It, it's an electronic device that needs updates.